All right, let's get going. So first of all, thanks for being with us here uh, this morning. Uh, local time here in Boston, Massachusetts in the US. Uh, I know many of you are, are joining us from all over the world. So whether it is good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you, thanks for being with us here today uh, for this UCM series IP PBX training webinar. Over the next uh, one and a half to two hours, uh, we will be basically taking you through a full online um, initial setup training for the UCM series IP PBX. I will uh, in basically introduce the devices to you, go through the various models that we offer, kind of some of the things that uh, really stands out about these devices, um, and then I will turn it over to Ernesto who will take you through the uh, most of today's webinar. We'll actually uh, show you how to set up, manage, provision, etc. cetera, um, the UCM series of IP PBX is using the uh, web user interface. This webinar is being recorded. We will upload it, we'll upload it to our YouTube page at the end of uh, probably uh, later today or tomorrow. Uh, so if you're looking for a recording, you can just go over and check our YouTube page at any point in time. Uh, you can go to YouTube and slash grant, or search Grandstream, or I believe it's youtube.com slash Grandstream Networks. So yeah, and you can also find a variety of other training web, uh, recorded training webinars and other webinars, such as our video talks up there. All right, so uh, as I always start off, this webinar is being brought to you by IP Video Talk. IP Video Talk, for those of you not familiar with it, is our own in-house um, developed video, audio, and web conferencing platform. Um, it was initially built to pair, uh, basically to offer a plug and play cloud platform with our GVC series of video conferencing devices. Um, and since it has been launched, it has been expanded to be a full video, audio, and web conferencing platform. It's one of the few platforms out there that allows you to hold meetings, to hold webinars, uh, to hold video calls, audio calls, etc. cetera, um, in a way that can be supported by web users, hardware video conferencing devices and mobile users through the Android and the iOS app. Uh, so take a look at it, ipvideotalk.com. You can sign up for, um, at any point in time, you can actually sign up for a free trial. So head on over to ipvideotalk.com to learn more and sign up. Again, you can get your hands on a free trial um, without having to put down any payment information, test it out, see what you think. It's great if you have a Grandstream GVC series device. Um, but also, if you're looking to really take your conferencing and your collaboration with your teams to the next level, this is a great tool to do so. Go on over to ipvideotalk.com to learn more and sign up. All right, so we're here today to talk about our UCM series of IP PBXs. Um, uh, for the next 10 minutes, I will basically just give you a quick introduction into these devices, kind of tell you about them, what stands out from a marketing or a sales perspective, and then I'll turn it over to Ernesto uh, for the rest of the webinar. Uh, actually, one, one thing I, I mentioned earlier that I wanted to come back, if you do have any questions at any point in time, feel free to shoot them over to us. Um, I would prefer, it's easier for us if you use that question and answer uh, window, which you can find from, uh, your, you'll see the chat window on the right hand side at the bottom of the screen. You'll see a little gear and to the left of that is a queue and a chat bubble. That is the question and answer uh, panel. It just makes it a little bit easier for me to kind of see the questions in the order that they come in and, and address them um, as we go. Um, if we do not answer your question when it does come in, uh, we will have a question and answer period at the end. We go through this in a kind of a very methodical fashion. Um, so a lot of the questions that you may have, we're going to answer later on in the webinar, which is why we're not going to answer them. But we will have a question and answer period at the end for anything we can't get to. All right, so let's start off here. The UCM series of IP PBXs has been out on the market. Uh, we introduced it in June of 2013, I believe. Um, and over the last four and a half years, it has grown to become one of the most popular on-premise IP PBXs in the world. Um, it is obviously a full unified communications manager, hence the UCM acronym. Um, offers you full voice, video, data, and mobility features. Um, really high-end enterprise-grade functionality at a price that is ideal for SMBs with no licensing fees at any point in time. You get this very easy... Um, or this very compact, very easy to manage um, PBX that can control 
um, anywhere from 500 up to 2,000 endpoints to, or registrations depending on the device. What you see here on the screen right now is our UCM61 and UCM6200 series. These are the more SMB gear devices in our portfolio. Um, all of the UCM6100 or 6200 series models will support up to 500 users, whereas the 6208 adds a little bit of capacity to support up to 800 users. Um, these devices, as I mentioned, award-winning devices deployed all over the world on a lot of different um, platforms used in a lot of different ways, not only just as unified communication managers, but because of the price that they have and, and the E and the, you know, the, the functionality that they offer. They're, they're also great for local backup devices if, if you uh, deploy cloud solutions. Um, we've seen these devices used to run um, security networks, SIP security networks, to run facility access networks um, with our GDS 3710 and, and other brands. So really a lot of different uses of these devices. Uh, the 6100 series was the first series that we came out with. Um, it has been, I don't want to say it's been updated, but uh, about a little over a year ago, we came out with the 6200 series. Um, the 6200 series is really just the continue, actually, let me stay on, let me go over here. Uh, the 6200 series is really just the continuation of the 6100 series. Uh, I believe the pricing is pretty much exactly the same. Um, the reason we came out with the 6200 series is because we had to put a new chip in it. The previous chip was no longer being manufactured. Um, and in most cases, it's just easier to give it a slightly different product name. But as you'll see, pretty much exactly the same functionality between the 61 and the 6200 series models. Uh, various, some of our distributors will still have the 6100 series um, models in stock. Uh, the 6200 series, the, there are a couple of things that you get on those devices that, that we enhanced over the 6100 series. The 6208 really is the, the easiest one to talk about. All the other 61 and 6200 series models will go up to 500 users. If you need something a little bit more, uh, if you need to support a little bit more users than 500, but you don't need the 2000 you get in our UCM 6510, 6208, which supports up to 800 registrations or users and up to 100 concurrent calls is the device for you. Uh, the other difference with the 6200 series models is they all have built-in DHCP servers, making your installations a little bit easier, and they also all support switch dual network or router mode. Um, but you can see between the 61 and the 6200 series models, you um, really the difference is, is simply just the amount of FXO ports on the device and the amount of concurrent calls that they can support. You see the concurrent calls below SIP devices anywhere from 30 up to 100. Um, for example, the 6202 will give you 30 concurrent calls, the 6204 will give you 45, the 6208 100, 6108 60. So that's really the, the main point of differentiation for those devices. Um, and again, the best thing about the UCM series, the, the whole platform of it, including the 6510, which I'll show you next, full enterprise grade functionality. When we came out with these devices, we took a look at the PBX marketplace. We kind of saw that like, like video conferencing and a lot of the other markets and networking, a lot of the other markets we've got into, we saw that the options out on the market were really just for large enterprises with huge, with large purchasing power, um, and that small to medium-sized businesses need and would benefit from this technology as much as anybody else. So we set out to design a platform that offers you these enterprise-grade voice, video, data, and mobility features and easy to manage PBX in a very affordable fashion. And for example, the 6202, uh, retails for 399 US dollars, um, which is frankly lower than you're going to find any other PBX out on the market. And it gives you full voice, video, data, mobility support, up to 500 users, 30 concurrent calls, etc. No licensing fees. One of the best things about these devices, uh, you pay the one-time upfront purchase price, and that's it. There are no other licensing fees when at we, whenever we come out with software firmware upgrades those are always free to download and free to install for the lifetime of your product um, again all hardware software is included so that slide all right so told you about the 6100 series and the 6200 series so now let's take a look at the 6510 if you're looking for a more high-end 
Um, PBX that so has higher capacity than what you get with the 61 or 6200 series. 6510 is exactly what you're looking for. Um, let me slip over to this slide. The UCM 6510 basically uh, different, differentiates itself from the 61 and 6200 series models based on what you, the three things you see here on the screen. Up, uh, support for up to 2,000 users, 2,000 SIP extensions or registrations, um, more uh, concurrent call capacity, up to 200 concurrent calls, so double any other UCM 61 or 6200 series model, and it gives you support built in for E1, T1, and J1 ports. Uh, so just like the UCM 61 and 6200 series, uh, enterprise grade features, affordable, compact, easy to manage, all done through the web user interface, no licensing fees, firmware and software upgrades are always free. Um, and when you put all that together, you get all the hardware and software included for the lifetime of the product. Um, and you get full unified communication support for all voice, video, data, and mobility features. Uh, one thing that, I, that, you'll, that I, you saw in a couple of the previous slides that I should mention is the UCM interface is entirely based on Asterisk, one of the most popular um, and stable open source PBX softwares in the world. Essentially what we've done is we've taken our own, uh, we've taken the Asterisk platform and we've wrapped our own user interface around it to kind of, you know, give it a grand stream look and feel to it. Uh, one of the things you'll see today, if you haven't seen already, if you may have seen our UCMs in the past but not looked at them recently, um, the we have completely changed the user, not completely changed, but it has been redesigned. I think it is a much more eye-friendly, user-friendly, attractive, easy to maneuver, seamless interface with the new design. All the same features and functionalities are still there. I believe they're pretty much arranged in the same way, but it's just the, the look and feel of it, it's a little bit easier to use. Um, so you'll see that, the screenshot you see here in this slide is actually of the old user interface. Um, and the reason why I put this slide up is I always wanna call out our, our zero config feature that, these, that the UCMs offer. Um, this is a feature that works with Grandstream products. So this zero configuration feature is only for Grandstream products, um, but that's not to say that this UCM series of PBXs won't support any SIP service or product. It is a fully open source SIP IP PBX and will be compatible with any third party SIP product, service, platform, etc. Zero config is something that we've added in to just basically make it easier to deploy Grandstream products. Um, where the device is able to auto-discover um, any Grandstream endpoint on the same network as the UCM. It is then able to auto-provision those devices either on its own or based on a set of general rules that you apply to it. And zero config can be used to manage remote devices. Um, sure, Ernesto will cover zero config in depth later on. Last slide for me before we turn it over to go through the technical part of the webinar today. Um, just wanted to highlight uh, some of the things that we've added to these devices this year. Um, I mentioned earlier that software and firmware upgrades are always free. Um, and this is just to show you that we are always enhancing these devices, adding major features and functionality, and you're never going to pay for any of these new updates or increased integration. Um, so first off, we have done integration with property management systems. Um, these are extremely popular in the hotel and the hospitality industry. They're basically yeah, allow you to merge. One second. All right, uh, they allow you to basically merge a hotel management platform with the communication platform so that they share information with each other, so that the communication platform can be used to manage and send information back into the hospitality management platform. Um, we did testing with, or we have certified H-Mobile, popular property management system from a uh, Spanish company, and also certified uh, the Mitel property management software. Um, and we've actually just put out a case study highlighting the UCM's use of um, Oracle's Opera property management system using H-Mobile kind of basically as the go-between to facilitate the connection between the UCM and Oracle. 
Um, so though we've only certified it with, or with um, excuse me, with HMobile and with Mitel property management software, um, those two can be used to facilitate integration with pretty much any many other property management systems. We've added integration with CRM platforms, Salesforce One and Sugar CRM, two of the most popular CRMs out there. So if you're a sales-based business or if you use or if your customers use uh, CRM platforms, integrate them with the UCM so that when somebody makes a call, that information is shown on the screen of the phone from the CRM and that the telephony system would then, or communication system, would then feed information back into the CRM. Uh, we have a CTI application it's called Grandstream Affinity. What this allows you to do is basically control all features and functionality of your Grandstream IP phone on your desktop through a simple plugin. Go to grandstream.com, go to support, and if you click on the tools section, you can download the CTI app. We also now support full WebRTC integration with the UCM series. For example, that gives you the ability to basically uh, have people call in from the web, from WebRTC browsers, from emails, from your website, and have those calls go directly into your communication system. All right, uh, I believe that's it for me. Yeah, that's it for me. Uh, so bear with us here for just a moment. I'm gonna turn it over to Ernesto, and Ernesto's gonna take you through the technical part, technical training part of today's webinar. So just bear with us here for a second. Yep. All right, perfect. Thank you, Phil. Um, so let me do a web uh, interface. Let me show you my UCM web interface. Uh, again, my name is Ernesto Calderon. I'm going to go over the uh, web interface of the UCM, sort of like a hands-on hands training. Um, I'm going to try to concentrate it to the basic stuff, so at least you have an idea um, how to configure a PBX, all the benefits and features that you have uh, that you can gain uh, with our PBX UCM 61 and 6200 series. Uh, the web interface is similar to the UCM 6510, as Phil mentioned. Um, all these three models, they are wrapped up in the same within the same firmware, same web interface, everything's going to be the same. So feature-wise are also the same. Uh, that's why we share the same firmware version across the board with all these three PBX models. So let me get started with the PBX, uh, with the system status or the dashboard. <clears throat> In the latest firmware, a few months ago that we released, we introduced some changes to the web interface. Some of the changes that we made was to precisely um, make some changes in the dashboard. So in one chat, in one page, you can see, you can have the status, you can feel the whole system status in one, in one page, in one single page. Before getting to the dashboard, let me give you a quick reminder. If you go to our website, the firmware.grandstream.com, we released a new firmware a few weeks, last week, I believe, firmware 15.16. If you have an older firmware, older than 14.24, please make sure that you have the latest firmware because there's an important security uh, patch included in the latest firmware. So again, 14.24 or older doesn't have that um, that fix or that patch. So make sure that you have the latest. 15.16 is the latest framework as of today. All right, back to the web interface. Uh, top left corner, you can see the status of the partitions. You can see how much storage you have available. If you have connected a, an external media, uh, like a USB drive, for example, or an SD card, you can also see that information from the dashboard. I don't have anything connected right now on my on my on my UCM. Um, uh, to the right, you have the resources usage. Very important for troubleshooting. You can see within the last the last few seconds or maybe a minute the uh, usage of the CPU and the memory. So, for example, if you're having some if you're having some audio quality issues. Um, probably you want to check this first to make sure that the UCM is not being overused. Um, um, depending on the model, as Phil mentioned before, you have some uh, limitation of concurrent calls. So from 25 all the way to 100 concurrent calls, depending on the model, 
uh, is what is supported. Then at the bottom, let me scroll down, you have the PBX status, so you can see how many extensions you have, how many calls are active, how many conference rooms you have, and how many of those are in use. Same thing for call queues, parking lots, and some of the features, security features, it'll be nice for you to know in one, in one single page uh, the status of these features, of these settings, if they are enabled or disabled. Dynamic defense, fail to ban, and uh, these are one of the main, the main two features that I always recommend if you have a PBX connected directly to your modem. Then to the right, we have the interface status, so you can see, even if you are not on site, you can see if there is any media connected, plug into the device, like the U I use USB stick, SD card, LAN port, because some PBX they come with two ports, LAN and one, so you can see which one is connected to it. Uh, and of course, the FXS ports, all the UCM, they come with two FXS, then you can see from here the status of these two FXS ports and same as the FXO ports. Following to the right, we have the trunk status, so similar to the interfaces. So you sometimes you want to know what trunks or zip trunk, either analog trunks or zip trunk, the status of those um, uh, trunks, if they are connected, if they are available, if they are in use, or if they are not, um, if they are not reachable. For the zip trunk, for example, if your service provider is, is down, then you can see that from this menu. The UCM also uh, support some uh, event actions that you can configure. So upon detecting any of these trunk, for example, being not available, then the UCM can send you an, an email notification so you are aware even if you are not on site just to avoid uh, waiting a phone call, a complaint call from your customers. Following, we had a system, system information, typical data that you need to know, for example, what type of hardware, what type of um, uh, for firmware it's on, uptime, things like that, similar to the network. You can see uh, the IP addresses, MAC address, etc. Then for the active calls menu, this is something that I like. I don't have any act active call at this time, but sometimes you want to know, first of all, who is calling who, for how long the call is being on in one menu, in one shot. So you can see that um, from ex one extension making or receiving a call to what number they calling or they're receiving the call from. And after I believe the each individual a uh, call status is going to be showing with a different coloring. So I believe a gray color is, is a typical call within less than 10 minutes and then after 10 minutes it's going to be changing color. Uh, when you are in a call for more than 60 minutes it's going to uh, show as red. So that's a good indication that you know something is going on or at least you know it's a red flag that you need to uh, consider. Within this same menu under each individual call, you have two buttons. Uh, I wish I can have, I can show you one right now, but these two buttons are for hang up that particular call or um, bridge into it, or you know, sort of like a join that particular call. So we have different options that you can um, bridge into that call. One is called a spy mode. The other one is called um, whispering, meaning supervisor mode and the other one is sort of like a, a three-way call. So depending on your case, you can select that and then enter your own extension number and then the UCM is gonna call your phone so you can bridge into that particular call. Alrighty, let me jump into the main stuff, the extensions and trunks, okay? So this is where you add your extensions. Uh, typically, there's no extension by default I'm going to show you quickly how to configure a few extensions by using the zero config feature. Zero config is sort of like a plug and play. Just connect the phones in the network and then you can assign the extensions from the UCM web interface. <clears throat> Obviously, before that, you need to have some extensions. I created some um, for you, but let me show you how to create a batch of extensions super quickly. 
So there is a, an option here that says select add method. So you have a single extension and then you have the batch. So for demo purpose, I'm gonna select batch and then right here you're gonna select how many extensions you want to create. Uh, by default it's five extensions. And everything below, you should keep it as default. Go all the way, make sure that everything's right. Uh, permission level, I'm gonna talk about that later but the permission level for those five extensions. And then when you click save, then all five extensions are gonna be created automatically. Once you have extensions, then we have to go down here to zero config, zero config, so zero config, as Phil mentioned before, is a pro proprietary um, uh, feature that we develop, and this option or this setting allows you to automatically detect any grand stream phone, so you can um, uh, provision it from this menu. The UCM is compatible with any third-party phones as well, but the zero config is an option only for grand stream phones. Now. Um, I don't have any phones connected in the network, but they, they're going to start showing up in this menu. Then on the right hand side, there's an edit button. You click on that and then select an extension. And that's it. However, I want to show you the three methods or three modes that you can use zero config. The one that I just showed you is the default one. Basically, you create your extensions, then you come to zero config then your phones are going to start showing up, popping up in the menu, and then you assign an extension on each particular phone. There's another mode that we call it automatic. So when you enable this option, you go down here, and then you have two more options. You can do auto assign extensions, or you can use enable pick extension. So the first one, if you enable it, Basically, upon detecting, as soon as you connect any grand stream phone, the UCM is gonna detect it automatically. It's gonna be transparent, by the way. You don't need to do anything from the web UI. Just enable this option, click save, and then as you connect phones in the network, UCM is gonna recognize it, detect it, and automatically provision an extension randomly. It's gonna be using this range from 5,000 to 6,300 in a sequential order. Um, you can always change that range to any range as you need by clicking this option here. So that's what we call the auto assign extension. The other mode that you can use the zero config is what we call pick extension. So this is good for existing deployments where you are replacing an existing PBX. Uh, that particular office has already extensions with some numbers that you basically want to go to each cubicle and replace the, the legacy phone with the grand stream phone by keeping the same extension. <clears throat> so first of all, you need to find out what is the extension range of that particular deployment. Um, let's say that it's a 300 to 399, for example, then you come here, go to pick extensions uh, segment, and then you change it, right, from 300 to 399. Then when you enable this option, you go to the office, connect a phone into the network. You know that you are in cubicle that used to be extension 303, for example. Then when the grand stream phone reboots from the menu, from the phone's menu, you're going to select extension 303. Simple as that. Then you move on to the next cubicle. Um, that's a nice way, a nice mode to, to take advantage of uh, zero config. Uh, you have a small field over here that says pick extension period. So obviously that menu at boot up time during, uh, on the phone is going to show up during this time. Let's say that you are thinking of planning to do that installation in two hours, for example. Then you enter here two for two hours and then all the phones upon rebooting, they're going to show that menu within two hours. Then after that period, they're going to reboot normally. Um, I just want to briefly explain that the zero config has some 
template that, uh, that can help you to uh, provision your office um, massively. So instead of provisioning a specific settings to each particular phone, then you can create a template that with a, a language, for example, a date format or anything that you can imagine. Um, you have full access to all the settings supported by all the grand stream phones. So you make the changes in this global policy, you save it, then every time that the UCM provision a phone is gonna include these particular settings. Then we have some glo global other um, features, let's say we call it global template or model template, that the global template applies to a particular model I'm sorry, a particular group of examples. So you can create a template that you're going to call it, um, for example, accounting, because you know that your accounting department, they have a specific uh, set of features. Then when you are provisioning these phones, you are going to select the template that you named previously as accounting. So then you can have in this, in this page multiple templates for accounting, for example, the warehouse, which in the warehouse probably they're using ATA, so you have a set of features dedicated for those type of phones. And then lastly, we have a model template that based on the grand stream model, and again, back to the example of ATAs, you know that your ATAs, they're gonna have a specific set of features that you want to apply to these particular devices only, but not to the other grand stream models. Then you create a template here, select the model as one of our ATA, for example, HD802, then create your settings as you wish, save it, and then the system automatically upon detecting the phone that is a, an ATA, a handy tone 801 or 802, then it's gonna apply these settings automatically. So everything's to make the installation process more efficiently and, and quicker. Lastly, we have the model update. Sometimes Grandstream releases uh, introduce new phones. Uh, if you don't want to upgrade the firmware, that the new firmware obviously is gonna include the latest template phones, um, then you can come here to this option. You can, you can keep the same firmware as you, that you have. Let's say that it's not the latest. Um, not a good, a good example for, for today, by the way, as I mentioned before, we, you need to have the latest firmware in order to protect your system of uh, security issues that, that we experienced in the past. But if you have a firmware that is working just fine, no issues, then you don't need to upgrade it, you don't want to upgrade it, but you purchase new phones, then you come here, find the phone model that, that, that you just purchased, and click the download button, and that's it. So instead of upgrading the UCM firmware, then you can download the template templates from this menu. All right, so let's go back. Um, we have extensions already. Um, now, now let's do the trunks. Trunk is obviously, we support analog trunks and zip trunks. Let me show you a little bit about the analog trunks first. So you create, you click on the create new analog trunk. This UCM that I'm I'm showing to you today comes with eight FXO port. This is a UCM 6108. So basically you select the FXO port that you want to be part of the trunk. Typically you need to select, typically you're using all the, the same, all the ports, right? However, if you have different telco providers that one gives you a better rate to call some countries or cities or state, then you can select the ports that are connected to that particular phone provider, right? Then in the trunk name, for you to know, then you can enter that telco provider, for example, or maybe the DID associated to that number. Uh, it's up to you, you can enter any name. Uh, then you click save and then you have a trunk. However, there are some settings that I want to show you quickly. Um, the UCM has an auto detection mode that just by selecting the trunks and click save, that should be enough. However, if you run into some 
um, static um, in the line, uh, echo, for example, maybe the caller ID is not showing correctly, then you need to do some troubleshooting. We have an option that you can manually make the proper changes for the, your caller ID scheme, um, call disconnection, or at the bottom, we have this button right here, PSTN detection. That is going to let the UCM run the test for you and apply the, apply the settings for you. Super easy, just enter the source, pot line, destination, let's say the following port, and then the destination phone number. So when you click detect, the UCM is gonna dial out as a loop, right? It's gonna dial out and the call is gonna come back to the port number two. And then the UCM is gonna start sending some signals to basically auto detect the best settings for the, those lines. If you ever run into any uh, more specific issues, Grandstream provides um, um, help desk. So feel free to go to Grandstream. I'm sorry, helpdesk.grandstream.com, so you can sign up for an account and you can open a support ticket at any time. Let's move on to the VoIP trunks. Save it. Okay. In the void trunks is where you add your zip trunk providers. We call it void trunk because in this menu, besides your zip trunk provider, you can also add a remote PBX. Let's say that you have a, a deployment with multiple branches, the main office, headquarters, and, and satellite branches and then you have P uh, UCMs on each location. So obviously in order to interconnect all these UCMs, then you need to add the remote UCM through this menu. Because at the end, for this particular UCM that you're seeing, and you know, the, the, the remote um, peers, it doesn't matter. It could be a Ciptron provider or another UCM. At the end, it's the same signaling uh, structure. So you click on create new zip trunk. We have two modes, as you may know, zip, pro, zip trunk providers. They give you two options, either by using authenticating by your IP address or by giving you zip credentials, a user ID and a password. I highly recommend if your zip trunk provider supports uh, IP authentication, then select P, uh, peer, zip trunk, enter a name for your zip trunk provider, for example, and then of course the IP address of your zip trunk provider. Then down here you have um, some settings uh, keep original caller ID, for example, that's a good option that when you are, for example, an incoming call from your from the zip trunk, right, is then forwarded back to your cell phone, for example, then that call is going to be forwarded back to the zip trunk. Then if you enable this option, when you receive that call, let's say that you uh, step out of the office and forward your, your extension to your cell phone, when you are out of the office and people calling your extension, then the UCM is gonna forward that call to your cell phone, right? So on your cell phone, you're gonna receive a caller ID. You have two options, either to, receive, to see the caller ID of the, your office, right? Or to see the caller ID of the original caller. So depending on your needs, you can enable or disable this option. Um, then, you know, for zip trunk, you know, sometimes the providers, they request or that you enter some caller ID name, uh, you can record anything that is going through this particular trunk. Okay. Now we have a zip trunk. 
um, remember that Glassstream support for the signaling protocol, we are a SIP company only. All our phones, all our ATAs, all our product is um, support SIP, SIP protocol. We do not support IIX, which is another uh, signaling protocol, but because this UCM is, is, uh, is an asterisk based PBX, and as you know, asterisk develop uh, um, the IIX uh, signaling protocol, then that's why we have this protocol enabled only in the UCM. If you have a third party phone that supports IIX, then, or a SIP trunk provider in this case, then you can add a trunk use, using that particular signaling protocol. Lastly, before I move out of the VoIP trunks, I want to show you this. Sometimes when you have a SIP trunk provider, you may have, you purchase um, a, a bunch of DIDs. You have the main DID, or probably you have multiple DIDs that you can assign each individual DID to an extension or a department. So when you are making an outbound call, what DID you would like to include during that outbound call? So that's why we created a DOD where you basically select the DID that you want to in include in your album calls. Then you want to say, you know what? I want these three extensions that when they make an album call, they are going to include this DID number. You save it. Then if you have a second DID, you do the same thing. But then you select other extensions. That's why the, the UCM is um, multi-tenancy friendly. Um, it's not that we are 100% multi-tenancy, but the UCM is so flexible that you can use one appliance, one UCM for multiple companies. Uh, because you can do call routing based on the DID, uh, incoming and outbound. You have, um, I mean, I have a lot of customers using just one box for as a multi-tenancy. Again, it's not 100% multi-tenancy. There are some features that we don't support. But by the way, in, it's in a roadmap to include that feature. So keep an eye on that. So now that we have our trunks, analog trunk and SIP trunk, you need to create your route, inbound and outbound route. So let's start with an outbound route. Click, you click on add, enter a name. So for my outbound calls, let's call it uh, domestics, for example, which is uh, typically a 10 digit numbers, right? So then in your pattern, you enter uh, 10 X's or if you check in the tooltips, over here, uh, you can see all the patterns allowed or the wild cards. Um, so as you know, in North America, you can use capital N's at the beginning. This is to simplify it and to make it more easy for the UCM to recognize that you are dialing a 10 digit number. Or you can enter just basically um, that or you can enter an X only, sorry, an X and a dot. That means any number. But in case you have different outbound routes, then you need to specify them. In an, in an office, typical office uh, installation, you have your domestic calls, you have your international calls, and probably you have your um, um, branch to branch calling. The remote branch is using extensions 3000, for example, then you need to include that here. So again, for domestics calls, you enter your 10 digit number. And then of course, the destination. So, so who's gonna be sending out those um, domestic calls? I included my analog trunk. You can also do, you can strip or prepend digits. Um, and most important, you have your failovers. If the analog trunks are busy, so then you can use a secondary trunk. And again, you can have multiple trunks, not only two, but five, 10, uh, unlimited. Then you have your failover as my zip trunk. 
click save. You can even create a time, co time condition. So domestic calls, Monday to Friday, 8 to 6 p.m. for example, I want to use this particular trunk. But out of office hours, I don't want anyone to dial. So probably I can send the calls to an, an announcement saying something, you know, you're not allowed to make any calls at this time. Or probably you can send the call through another trunk. All right, click save. Then a good example, I'm gonna make a second example for international calls. So you enter your rule name, then on in your pattern, obviously you enter 011, which is the international access code in North America. If you are in another country, I know the other countries that use zero only or zero zero, so you need to enter that here. Um, I forgot to mention that you have some option that you can include a PIN number. The PINs are typically more um, useful in um, international calling, right? So then you can enter a password, any number that you want. Then when you dial a 011 number, the system is going to prompt to enter uh, the PIN number. You can even select the call duration. So by enabling this option, then you can enter you know, the time. Uh, there's a warning message, by the way, when reaching the expiration time or the duration limit, the system is gonna warn the, the caller. So you can include, um, yeah, that message is gonna be repeated. So you can enter mul multiple uh, data uh, numbers here. And then obviously the destination. So for international calls, probably you want to use your SIP trunk provider. And again, you can add a fillover or a time condition. Okay, so we have extensions, trunks, and an outbound route. Let's do an incoming route. Any questions, Phil, that I can help you right now? <clears throat> Let's see what we got here. There's a couple I was holding on to. Um, for zero config, do you need to basically enable that on the phone side? No. The zero config um, automatically any answering phone comes with the zero config option enabled. Okay. A um, couple of questions actually about setting up SLA, just generally, how easy it is to set up and how, how do you do it with the UCM? Sure. Basically, you can configure anything on the phone, right? So the, I don't know if they're referring to the SLA station that I have here in my, in my um, system stack, I'm extension menu, but I'm gonna explain about both. Um, SLAs are supported on the phone, um, you can configure any setting on your phone from the zero config. When you add, a, add an extension into that particular phone, then you have a menu that you can configure your what we call the multipurpose keys, the MPKs. So you can configure a key with multipurpose purposes. For example, speed dial, VLF, SLA, uh, sending ETMF, things like that nature. So you can do that from the zero config. If the intention of the question is about the SLA station, that's something a little different. <clears throat> what the SLA station does is, remember, we are a digital PBX that is trying to emulate a legacy PBX, right? On the legacy analog PBXs, in your phone, you used to have, um, let's say, the lines buttons attached um, on each particular button is attached to the pot line. So when you press that button, you are using, you are press, when you're pressing button one, for example, you are using line one. 
that is connected on your PSTN. Um, and when you press button two, same thing, right? So when you are when you receive a call and put the call on hold, any in the office, anyone in the office, they can select line two because it's blinking. So then they can retrieve that call. So in the in a digital environment, that is is not easy to accomplish because typically you have zip trunks um, or you have the analog lines as well. So we kind of created an option that you can create stations and then depending how many analog trunks you have, analog line you have from one through eight, then you can have um, an SLA station with eight lines that that information that you see is going to push it to the phones in, in a way, in sort of like a BLF. So at the end, for the user perspective, on the Grand Sim phone, they're going to see buttons that are linked to the PSTN lines. There's a document explaining how to set up uh, SLA extension on a website. Um, so you, you can take a look at that. Cool. Um, one other couple of people have been commenting on this in the chat, so I figured I would read it out loud and, and see what you have to say. Um, issues when logging into the UCM getting a certificate error. Um, and when somebody pointed out that it needs an SSL certificate assigned to the UCM, and I guess we used to maybe not support that, um, but that it may have been solved in a mm -hmm. recent firmware upgrade. I wonder if you could comment on sure. that. Yeah, it's not an error, by the way, but I understand uh, when you log in the first time to any Grandson UCM, uh, because we are using HTTPS, um, then your, your browser is kind of warning you that this particular connection doesn't is not uh, secured. So there are some buttons in the browser that you can bypass that. Um, you can either disable HTTPS on the UCM, not recommended, but simple as one click, then every time that you access the UCM, you, you don't get that message. Or you can buy a certificate on multiple websites, um, um, GoDaddy or there's some of them that are free today, by the way. I don't have the name on top of my head, but you need to purchase a certificate. The UCM has an option that you can upload that certificate. So every time that you access from your browser, you don't have that warning. Cool. Um, if you don't mind, uh, one more question and then we can get back to uh, the webinar. Um, and, and actually this, you may be something that you're still going to cover, but what is the best way to set up a remote user who is in a different location, okay. configuring the phone, et cetera? Yeah, that's a good question. We have, that's, that's the main purpose of having a, an IP PVX that you can have any IP phone registered to the PVX from anywhere as long as they have internet access, right? So typically most of the extensions are within the same network as where the PVX is connected to, but Sometimes you have remote employees working from home or even uh, using a Grand Stream soft phone. We call it Grand Stream Wave, which is, by the way, a, a free soft phone that you can download um, from your uh, iOS uh, and Android platforms. Um, so these are remote extensions. You need to make sure that the UCM is accessible from the public network, meaning that you need to do some port forwardings so remote extensions can access the UCM in case you have a firewall, right? Which, by the way, we always recommend putting the UCM behind a firewall. The UCM can be connected directly to the modem with a public IP. The UCM has some firewall settings and even has some security settings that you can enable. However, if you have a firewall, I highly recommend it to put the UCM behind that. Regardless, then you need to make sure that that UCM is reachable from outside, meaning the IP address, the public IP address is reachable from outside by doing some network port forwarding um, that that one, depending on your, the equipment that you're using, you, you should know how to do that. And forwarding the port. So for um, a voice over IP, Grandstream is using the typical port 5060 for signaling and for RTP or the media we are using from 20,000 to 40,000. That Those ports, by the way, are configurable uh, in the settings that 
Uh, like I'm going to explain that later today. And then you need to manually configure that remote phone by entering the SIP server, which is the UCM IP address, and then the extension, the password. Um, for uh, GS Wave, which is a soft phone, we have an option. I think I can explain that uh, very quick. Let's say that your remote employee using a soft phone, GS Wave, is extension 1001, for example. So when you select that, you have an option here, email notification. That will give you, the UCM is email ready, by the way. Sorry. So the UCM is email ready, meaning that by using a non-authenticated option, the UCM can start sending emails. That particular extension, 1001, when you created it, it should have an email address, right? The user's email address. So when you click this option, the UCM is going to send an email. That email is going to contain a QR code that your Gransim Wave can scan and get provision automatically. So that's, that's an, a good way to provision remote extensions on a Gransim Wave. But if you have a phone, then you need to do the configuration manually. All right, let's continue with the webinar. Um, I'm going to explain the inbound route. So obviously, for any incoming call reaching the PBX, you need to have uh, some directions where to send that call to, typically to an IVR or out attendant, or to a particular extension or ring group. So this is how you do it. First of all, you select the trunk. Let's keep the analog trunk for now. So all the calls coming through my analog trunk, I am going to forward it, and this is my destination. Then you have basically everything, right? You have you can forward, you can send the calls to an extension, a particular extension, to an IVR. Let me see what I have or probably to a ring group. Water anything. Thank you. Um, or to one particular extension. So then you select the extension that you want to use. And that's it. So any incoming call through the analog trunk is going to go, is going to ring this particular extension, 1002. Or this particular IVR. You can add a time condition, right? So office hours, Monday to Friday, eight to six, incoming calls are gonna go to the main IVR. And then after hours, depending on the time condition, it's gonna go to a different IVR, like the off hour IVR. We have the color ID pattern. That's a good option for, let's see, let's say uh, key employees, so when they dial the main number um, from their cell phones, then the system, <clears throat> the system can detect that, okay, this is Ernesto's cell phone. I'm gonna send the calls to this particular destination. So then you can enter, you know, uh, call it a, uh, cell phone number, call it ID numbers, multiple, and uh, the system will route the calls based on your call it ID. Okay, sorry about the letters, but that's the intention of the caller ID pattern. So very easy. Ah, you can even include a, an alert info. Remember that I told you about the multi-tenancy? That's a, a good way. So for example, if you have lines that are associated to company ABC, for example, so when the call comes in through those lines, then you can send the calls to the receptionist extension, for example, and then include a particular ringtone. So when he or she receives that call, the phone is going to ring distinctively. So she knows how to greet the, the customer. Um, all right, so let me save this. And let me show you how to do an inbound route on a zip trunk. 
In an inbound, in a SIP tron, you have more benefit because it's SIP, so obviously you can detect what DID number they dialed. So in the same example, if you purchase 10 DIDs with your provider, then you can say, you know what, people who dial this number, I want them to go to a particular extension, for example, okay? And then you save it, and then you can create a second inbound route with either, you can keep it blank, the pattern, or you can enter at another DID number that you have, and then people who dial this number, then you can send the calls to a different destination. Again, an, an IVR, a ring group, uh, basically anything that is supported on the PBX. Mm -hmm. Call back queue, a call queue. So that's the intention. Let me send it to an IVR. Or you can basically keep it blank, right? You can delete it, and that means that any DID that they dial can be sent to that particular extension or destination. Okay? All right, so we have inbound, outbound routes configured. Now let me show you a little bit of the call features. Perfect. So as Phil was mentioning, the UCM support, conference room, IVR, ring groups, call queues, and multiple call features. For the conference menu, you can basically create a conference super easily, just clicking the create new conference room and save. That's it. However, you have some settings that you can take advantage. For example, you can create a conference room in a quiet mode, meaning that anyone joining the, the conference, the system is not gonna prompt or you know, providing a beep sound that someone joined or left. You can announce the callers. So when someone joining, the system is gonna prompt the caller to ask to enter his name, followed by pound, I believe. Then when the call is connected to the conference, the system is gonna replay back that name. And of course, you can record the whole conference. You can make it private. You can end by doing that. Then you need to enter an admin password. So people joining the conference, they must enter a PIN number. <clears throat> then as the administrator, from the web UI of the UCM, you can see how many people are in that conference. I don't have anything now, of course. You, if there's many people, they're gonna be listed, all the participants in this menu, on the right hand side under options, you have multiple options to mute that individual, to hang out that particular call. Um, yeah, only these two. However, in the general, in the, in the conference room, uh, general settings, then you can invite all the participants from the web UI. Or you can invite another conference room that probably is in a remote UCM. We added not too long ago a, a scheduler. So when you create your conferences, you can create a, a conference schedule then um, the system is going to automatically call the phones listed in the conference schedule. But more, um, in my opinion, is I think it's very nice to synchronize it with Google Calendar. So this is where you enter your Google Calendar settings. That means that when you create a conference schedule in the UCM, that information is going to be pushed to your calendar, Google Calendar. So then you're gonna receive the typical Google um, notifications before the meeting happens. And then you can see the conference recordings in this menu. All right, IVRs. In IVRs, you can create multiple IVRs. You can 
Let me show you how to do that. You need to have the recordings first. You need to either upload the recording from any phone or you can have a nice professional recording that you can upload to the to the UCM. So you enter a name. And you have some options that within the IVR, when someone dialing in and listening to the IVR, they can have multiple options to dial an extension, to dial a conference, to dial, make a page call, you know, or maybe all, all depends. For security reason, my opinion, I recommend just to enable extensions only. And this is where you upload your recordings or your prompt. By default, we have this sample, but you can click on the prompt menu and then jump into that menu where you can upload the, the recordings. Um, and then most important, the pressing events. So this is where, you know, when press one, one for sales, two for support, that kind of a typical AVR. Then you can, this is how you uh, entered your event. Okay. All right, we have an IVR and how about ring groups? Very common. You create your ring groups like this, enter a name and select the extensions. Move it to the right. Sometimes you have many, many extensions that you, you don't want to start scrolling down. So we added a nice option that you can basically enter, you know, the number and then the system automatically is going to search it up for you. Once you select your extension on the right hand side, you can also, if, in case you have um, a remote UCM, like a remote branch, you can also have remote extensions that are registered to a remote UCM, they can be shown by, by synchronizing LDAP. These two UCM phone books, they're gonna be synchronized using LDAP, right? The benefit besides having the phone book updated in all the phones with all the extensions in, in all the UCMs in the company, you can also add a remote extension into a particular ring group. And then the strategies, right? So ring in order or ring simultaneously. You can record calls going to that ring group. And that's it. Uh, you, you also have an option that if no one answer, you can still send the call to a different destination. All right, now we have a ring group. How about a call queue? We added a lot of um, reporting and we improved the call queue, in other words, in the last couple of firmwares, so not too long ago. Keep an eye on that. So this is how you create a call queue. Basically just enter a name and add your agents. Similar to the ring group, you select the agents, move it to the right. And these are the new settings that we added. You have now a virtual queue, a position announcement. So now people can, can hear in what position they are. Um, uh, other settings like uh, dial in when the, when the call queue is empty, that can be allowed or not allowed. Maximum maximum wait time, for example, when reaching this time, what's going to happen? You can you can end the call or maybe transfer it to another destination. You have destination prompt cycle. 
that's a, a good way, a good opportunity to play back an announcement. Could be an advertisement or a reminder uh, how to, you know, get some product, whatever the company that you're installing the UCM is for. Or basically just to say, you know, all, all our agents are busy, please wait a little more. So let's save that. All right, that, I mean, we have a lot of call features, um, speed dial, voicemail, but let me show you all the settings that I think are more, more important. Are we good in time? Yeah, we're good. Okay. For example, PBX settings, and on the general settings, there are a few settings that I would like to show you. Remember the um, extension range. This is where you manipulate your extension ranges. For example, the user extensions, the auto provisioning extensions, the conference extensions. So you can change that. Every time that you change something, everything needs to correlate with the following um, ranges, let's say. Sometimes it's too difficult that you can probably disable the extension range. So the system is basically going to let you assign the extensions every time that you create anything, like a ring group, for example, then you need to enter that extension number. Under SIP settings, um, for security, this is something that we always recommend if you have the UCM connected to the public network always change the port number. Default is 1000, uh, 5060, but you can change it to anything else. Okay, these are setting for troubleshooting or I believe what I wanted to show you. Remember that someone was asking about what ports to be to forward if you have a firewall. So by default, remember the SIP setting, I'm sorry, the SIP port, which is 5060 or whatever you change it to, and the RTP port. Those are the ports that you need to make sure that are forwarded or allowed in your firewall. My bad, the default now is 10,000 to 20,000. Again, you can always change that here. For music on hold, you have an option that you can up upload your music on hold, you can delete, or you can make changes to the existing music on hold. You can have your nice professional recordings and upload it from this menu. Or you have your vo voice prompt, then um, for your greetings, for example, sorry, in, in custom prompt, this is where you upload your IVR prompts, for example, your announcements. Um, yeah, typically extend IVRs and announcements. You upload it here. You can always change the system prompt, meaning, you know, when the UCM detects an error, the UCM is going to say, you know, call could not be completed, all circuits are busy, things like that in that nature. You can change those system prompt to different languages. We basically support all the languages, most of the languages. Um, these are asterisk based language package, by the way. We, we, we don't touch this. Um, so once you add the language, every time you create an extension, then you can choose what language that extension is going to be under. All right, under system settings, you have a couple of options for HTTP. Someone was asking earlier um, how to avoid that the browser is going to uh, give you that, H, um, uh, how do you call it, um, uh, security, missing security option in the web browser. So either by disabling HTTPS, mm -hmm. not recommended, of course, but just if you enter HTTP, then you're not going to have that that prompt anymore. But if you do want to use an encryption, a certificate, then you need to purchase one 
and then you upload it in from this menu okay for security default port number is 8089 you can always change that another option that you need to change I think the default is enabled this is what we call redirect from port 80 mm -hmm. so when you're dialing and when you're entering just the IP address of UCM um, the UCM is redirecting automatically from 80 to whatever you have here which is 8089 so for security you can disable that but you need to remember the port number when typing the address on your browser Uh, UCM support IPv4 and IPv6. OpenVPN, very nice option uh, for remote extensions. Someone was asking. Remote extensions, you can also use OpenVPN. You can VPN from the phone into the UCM. The, our phones, all Grandson phones, they support OpenVPN client. And the UCM now supports OpenVPN as a server. You can create the VPN client side on the customer's network prem uh, or by using the Grandson phone. We support the DNS with these providers, dndns.org, noip.com. Some of them are free, some of them are paid. Basically to get to have a domain, a free domain name in order to access your UCM. Some of the security settings, um, for security reasons, you must enable <clears throat> this type of uh, typical firewall settings, okay? So you need to click on the, I mean, we have a couple options, the ping defense and the ping of death defense. If you have a UCM connected directly to your modem, I highly recommend enabling this option. And then these are the typical firewall rules that you can create either to accept, reject, or drop packets from different type of uh, traffic inbound or outbound. And then you have different services or you can customize it. You, know, you can enter reject packets from any IP but allow packets from a particular IP which could be your service provider, for example. Dynamic defense, very similar, but in this case, no rules, just enable this. What I do like, highly recommend, is the fail to ban. Especially if you have the UCM exposed to the public network, you must enable it. So turn that option on, and that's it. You don't need to do anything else. Automatically, the UCM is detecting um, what they call SIP, uh, DOS, uh, SIP attacks sorry, in order to gain access to an extension and start making international calls. So by enabling this option, the UCM is automatically banning IP addresses and keep them in the blacklist. Um, there's an event option that you can be notified when that happens, by the way. All right, let's move on to the maintenance menu. Any questions, Phil, that I can answer now? I would finish up. I've got a bunch, and we can go through them once you finish up. Perfect. All right. So, obviously, this is where you manage your users. Uh, obviously, the use, the super admin is the, the, the primary administrator. Uh, as you know, new PBXs, they, have, they come with an admin password on a sticker. So, you need to check the UCM on the back of the UCM you're going to find the, the, it's a random generated password, okay? So in case you reset your PBX, you must be on site to read the password out of the sticker. And then every time that you create an extension, it will create a, a user portal, a user ID. So this individual, they can log in the, to the UCM to their portal so they can see settings pretending only to their extensions. They can download voicemail, they can download faxes, and they can configure some called features like, uh, you know, call forwarding, for example.
for let's say for troubleshooting or maintenance this is very important the operation log as an administrator you need to know who has access to it who tried to access um, and you need you can everything is logged for you to know in case you are uh, doing an audit or maintaining maintaining the PBX you need to come here you can download that information as a CSV file or you can filter it also for a particular um, event troubleshooting if you open a support ticket with Grandstream <clears throat> we always recommend providing a trace traces with syslog included so if you ever reach out to Grandstream and they are asking for a syslog this is how you configure it basically you enter you don't need to have a syslog server by the way uh, if you have one even better because you can monitor the PBX for 24 7 or you know constantly but if you want to specifically grab collect the logs for a particular um, for a few minutes or uh, when you are reproducing a particular problem then you need to enter any IP address here for example your network gateway and you can select all modules if Grandstream told you what module specifically you need to select then you can check that and then debug okay make sure that you enable the debug option then you save it so remember you need to have an IP address here that we're gonna force the UCM to send syslog out to the wire we, we don't care where but at least out to the wire then see network troubleshooting this is where you can capture a PCAP or packet capture. Basically, you click start, reproduce the problem. When the issue happens, hang up, then you stop it, and then you download the trace. That's a PCAP file that you can open with any wire chart software. And uh, that's a good trace that is going to contain not only the zip packets, but also the syslogs. All right, CDRs. Um, CDRs, as you know, we support that. There's a menu that you can see. You can get all the IVRs in, in a web interface manner, but you can also download it. <clears throat> you can download all the records. It's a CSV file. Then you can upload to your record, your, your preferred record, I'm sorry, reporting software, or even a billing software. Uh, you can filter based on the caller ID, uh, extension number, multiple criteria. And if they were recorded, then there's a record button or playback button on this area that you can download it. But sometimes you have so many um, calls that you, you want to find specifically the call, the recording files. So this is where you can find only the call recorded. Uh, the UCM has an API that you can interconnect a uh, billing software, for example, or maybe a reporting software that can request and collect data out of the UCM. So this is where you enable that. There's a document on our website, so you need to learn what commands are available. But this is where you enable it and create your uh, credentials. Lastly, uh, value added feature, we talk about the zero config. <clears throat> AMI, as, as an open source PBX, a lot of people would like to have access to the Asterix uh, management interface. Um, we prefer not to allow that. We prefer that you configure or administer the PBX through the web UI. However, based on requests, we enable an AMI with basic um, with read-only capacity. So you can access the, 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 the AMI, and then you can have multiple privileges, privileges, so originate calls, CDR agents, etc. 
you need to create your credentials and then you know open your terminal access the UCM and then you're going to be accessing the AMI we also support CTI server there's a document on our website that you can make the UCM compatible with a billing uh, report software software called CTI um, in order to accomplish that interaction you need to specify the port number here for CRM we the UCM is compatible with a couple CRMs uh, sugar CRM for example or Salesforce basically by enabling this option this third-party CRM they're gonna integrate with the UCM and collect data or vice versa the UCM upon receiving a call is going to query into the CRM database for multiple um, data for example the contacts the leads or the accounts table so depending on your CRM Salesforce for example then you have multiple ways to look up and then the incoming call is going to present that data into the caller ID into the phone's display they're going to see um, you know customer number for example maybe address or whatever the CRM provides for PMS as Phil was mentioning before we integrate that with a couple of PMS uh, middleware um, it's mobile and uh, actually here and my tell I believe yeah so basically these are um, middlewares that are compatible with a um, large amount of software dedicated to the hotel to hotels so by the UCM integrating with one of these two PMS then you can use uh, this UCM in a hotel environment some of the features obviously that you can accomplish by using a PMS is the room status wake up call service minibar we have more documentation on our website to explain how to configure the PMS without having a PMS you can also use the wake up service by creating extensions or room that are associated with an extension number for faxing either the user can Login to his to his um, to the heat user portal, and then from that portal they can upload a PDF file, enter a phone number, and then just click send, and the fax is gonna go out. From the administrator interface, like I'm showing you showing you now, you can do the same thing. And then down here you have a sort of like a log, so you can see the status of these fax uh, that were sent in the past. And getting close to the last setting, uh, announcement center. This is a nice option that you can pre-record an announcement, create a, a group of extensions. Then the UCM is going to start dialing all these extensions one by one and play back that particular announcement. Unfortunately, the, the numbers that you can include in the announcement center are extensions only because that would be an, a good option for dialing out an external number so current, currently we support extensions only um, so that basically covered most of the features um, that I wanted to show you so you have an idea of the Grandson PBX. Um, if you have any questions, we're gonna go over a Q and A. Uh, Phil's gonna help reading the questions. Some of them he answered already through the chat, and I answered some of them during my webinar. Um, we're gonna allocate a, a few minutes to answer most of the questions. If one of some of the questions are not I'm not able to answer it, uh, bear with us. We can uh, reply back uh, specifically to your email later on. Cool. Thanks, Ernesto. Awesome job, as always. Um, so yeah, I went through the chat, and 
pulled out uh, the questions that I pretty sure were not answered. I uh, do want to thank some of you guys uh, in the chat for answering uh, questions that some of our attendees had. That's awesome. I always love to see our, you know, our, our, our uh, whatever you want to call it, Grandstream Evangelist Reseller Group. I um, always love to see you guys uh, helping each other out. Uh, so do want to thank those of you that did help us answer some of the questions in the chat. Um, one thing before we do go through the questions, um, if you do have any additional ones, feel free to type them over to us. Uh, if you don't mind, use the question and answer panel. It's easier for me to keep track of the questions then as they come in. Um, so before we go through the questions, I do want to say that this is, you know, this is a one and a half to two hour training webinar. We do full day in-person trainings on the UCM series. So there's just no possible way that we can cover everything here today. It's meant to be a quick kind of introduction to allow you uh, to answer some of the questions that you may have if you're an experienced user, or give you an introduction. If you're looking for a lot more in-depth education, hands-on training with our engineers in the room, uh, head on over to our training. Actually, it's the Grandstream Academy is now where we're doing all of our trainings. Um, which you can find at academy.grandstream.com. Academy and, and before we wrap up later, I'll give you more information on the Grandstream Academy and what that kind of means to our training and certification process uh, going forward. But anyway, let's get into these questions. Um, does CNAM with trunk carrier overwrite the DOD value? We're doing uh, numbers only. That's a good question. We have a feature request to override the name part of the caller ID also. So stay tuned, keep an eye on the release note. Probably in the next firmware release, we're gonna include that. Uh, some of you are saying that the question and answer, pa answer panel does not seem to be working. Um, Apologize for that. I'll, I, everything I can verify from my own side seems to show that it is working. Um, so apologize for that. If it's not working for you, just shoot it over through the chat for now. Uh, so let's get back to these questions. Um, can you in can you interconnect two UCMs using SIP trunks? Yeah, definitely. That's the purpose of um, interconnecting. As a matter of fact, that's the primary. Uh, protocol that I recommend. Although both UCM, the UCM, they support IIX as well. So depending on your network um, environment, you can probably use IIX. But 99% of the time, I recommend using SIP. Cool. A um, couple, one person in particular saying that they're having issues doing that. Any like common issues okay. or concerns that you see in doing that that this person might be able to look into to solve their problem? Yeah, of course. When you add a remote UCM, uh, you need to consider a couple of settings. Uh, obviously, you need to create the UCM or you need to add the, UC the remote UCM under the VoIP trunk menu as I showed you, right? After doing that, then you need to create your inbound and outbound routes. So obviously, when you're calling from uh, one UCM to the other UCM extensions, then you need to have an outbound route. And, uh, and at the same time, for the remote extension, you need to have an inbound route so you can allow the incoming calls from that particular uh, UCM. So again, VoIP trunks, in and outbound route, those are the three primary settings that you need to configure. Um, if you're still running into issues, probably we're talking about some network issues that we can help you um, overcome by opening a support ticket with us. Probably something related to the NAT IP, something related to your firewall. Um, but yes, uh, give us an open that support ticket and we can expand a little more on that. Cool. Uh, for those of you sending over questions to the chat, bear with us. I have a pretty decent backlog of questions that we're going through here. Um, on couple of questions here on zero config. The first one being, uh, could you tell us the exact syntax order in which you assign zero configuration temp or zero config in order to assign a phone updates and keys? 
Uh, this person is mentioning that sometimes the reboot will not happen with zero config and you have to go to the extension and reboot the phone there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I've seen that, by the way, a long time ago in a, in a very old firmware, especially with a particular phone, I believe it was the video phone, the grand screen video phone. So first advice, obviously, you need to have the latest firmware on the phone and on the UCM. Um, sometimes your network Remember, the way that the UCM is communicating with the phones and back and, back and forth, we are using a what we call a broadcast IP or, or, or method. Sometimes your, your network doesn't like the broadcast and may be dropping these packets. That's why it's going to interfere with that type of communication. So make sure that your switches are not dropping any broadcast. Um, and number two, make sure that you have the latest firmware on both uh, devices. Can you manually override p values in zero config? Yes, uh, sometimes you may have an outdated firmware which it doesn't doesn't have the latest settings on a particular phone. So again, I mentioned that we have the model update. Let me show you quickly where you can update the templates, right, from this menu right here. Um, but it's, if still, for some reason, Grandstream hasn't updated the, 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 the particular setting, then yes, you can override the p-value um, by going to the zero config. Well, I don't have any phone detected. When you go to, to edit that phone, then you go to advanced, and then from advance, you have an option that you can create a p-value. You need to know the p-value, go to grandstream.com, go to support, and there's a section where you can download. Actually, I can show you. Right here, tools, go to tools, and you have the all the templates. So, for example, if that particular p-value belongs to a GXP, I don't know, 21... 35, for example, right here. Go to configuration template. It's a zip file. We have all the template for any phone. And then find out the p-value, because in that template, you have the name of the p-value. OK, next up. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So this is a good example, DP750. So in this template, you can find out that, um, for example, um, special features. Now you know that the p-value for a special feature is p198, as an example. So then within the template, you can find the specific p-value that you're trying to change. And unfortunately, I don't have a phone. Uh, connected to my demo unit, so but typically when the phone shows up here, you go to the options, click the edit button, and then click advance. That's that's where you can add a p value. Cool. Um, all right, there was uh, somebody asking about um, adding new ringtones to a phone. Um, saying his goal is to emulate inbound call sounds versus basically differentiate inbound calls versus internal calls um, so they can tell which is which. And can this be done via zero config? Um, it was noted that um, obviously we have a ringtone generator tool on our website, um, which you can download and then upload to the phone, um, which can be hosted the same where the firmware is. This person is noting that they have spent a good amount of time and could not get the tones to show up on the phone. They worked with one of our distributors and were finally able to get it, but weren't able to figure out exactly mm. how they got it. Okay. And yeah, good. That's that, that's a typical question, by the way, because we have most of our phones. They follow one system, and the Android phones, like the video phone, for example, those phones they come already because they're Android they come already with many, many ringtones, but th that phone is an exception. Now, the regular phones that we have, the GXP, for example, um, you know, 1700, 1600, 2100, 
they have they come with three ringtones, uh, four actually, default and ring one, two, and three. Those are the only ringtone that the phone has. So if from the PBX, yes, incoming call, this is a good example. When you go here to the inbound route, you can say, all right, I want my incoming calls to have this particular ring, ring pattern. So it's a little confusing, but we have up to 10 ringtones that apply to the Android phones. However, for the GXP phones, then we have the bell cores. Then DR1 is the default. Then you can select DR2 or DR3 or DR4. So you can play with these three ringtones only. Now, let's say you select number three and then incoming call with this DID will be sent to this extension. So extension 1005 is gonna ring distinctively. Now, how about if you want to customize your ringtones? Yes, we have an option under the same tool section that you can customize your ringtones and then upload it to the phone. Right here. Mm, customization guide. Ringtone generator, generators, okay? So you can have your own ringtone, but you, it's a binary file. So it needs to be a grand string binary file. You need to open this application, upload your ringtone, and then that application is gonna convert the file into a binary file, which you need to name it. There's some, uh, there's a, a guide in, in that particular menu, by the way. So you need to name it with ring one or ring two or ring three, <clears throat> and then put that file into the firmware server path, and then the, point the phone to your firmware server, and then the phone is gonna upload the ringtone. We added an option, by the way, not too long ago, that now you can upload the ringtones from the web UI. But again, the intention is to do it everything from the UCM. He mentioned about zero config. Um, if you want to use the predefined three ringtones, then that's how you do it from the from the inbound route. Okay. Awesome. All right. Looks like we got about ten or fifteen minutes left here, so we'll get through as many questions, remaining questions as we can in that time. Uh, does the UCM recognize fax tones? So if somebody, for example, were to send a fax to the wrong number, it would still receive it? Yep, um, the UCM support a fax server, depending how you configure it. Uh, you may have your inbound calls that there's an option that you can say out of the tech fax tones for a, how do you call it, like a, a line that is used for both voice and fax, that's a good option. In case you have only one line, for example, small, a small office or a small um, shop that they use one, on, one line only for fax, fax and voice, then you can turn on that option. Then upon the fax, the sender fax machine start playing the fax tones, the UCM is gonna recognize, it's gonna interrupt the IVR, and then it's gonna provide the fax tones. For those of you saying that the question and answer did not work, you are correct. I do apologize for that. I'm not quite sure what happened, but we will we will check up on that afterwards. Um, can you explain what unmonitored means in terms of a VoIP trunk? All right. Um, he's referring to this option here. And minor. So let's go to that SIP trunk provider. Let's test SIP. Go here. All right, so the test, this is a SIP trunk. And when you go to advanced settings, <clears throat> there is a setting we call it heartbeat detection. It's not enabled. 
highly recommend it. You need to check that. You need to enable it. What it's doing is that basically the UCM is sending sort of like a ping to that zip trunk or server every 60 seconds. So when the zip trunk provider is down, then the UCM knows already that that trunk is not available. So it's not going to waste time when someone is trying to dial. It's going to say, it's going to provide a prompt right away saying all circuits are busy or something like that. If you have a failover in place, then the UCM is not going to bother that zip trunk because it knows already that it's down. So it's going to send the calls to the failover, to the failover trunk. If you don't have that option enabled, then the UCM is going to start sending the calls to that uh, provider for a few seconds, maybe two or three seconds, and upon not responding or not receiving a response, then it's going to fill over or provide the prompt. And also, when you are monitoring or enabling, when you have the heartbeat enabled, when the trunk is down, you're going to be notified. If you remember that event, uh, you can enable or configure the event so you can receive emails upon uh, this type of event. All right, this question we've gotten a couple of times, and this is probably a good one to talk about. Um, at, the question is, um, is our open VPN a server? Um, or basically, people noting in the older firmware it was a client, um, so did it change from a client to a server? That's a good question. Let me confirm it for you. I believe we support now both client and server. Um, yeah, actually, <clears throat> server only. Yeah, it's in a roadmap, by the way, to in, to create a, or include a, a client also. Typically, because this is a UCM, obviously, you need to have the OpenVPN as the server, and then your remote phones, they have, they do support OpenVPN as the client. So, but currently, it's OpenVPN server only. All right, that answers that. Uh, a couple of questions about centralized phone books and kind of how to create those, how to configure them using either zero config or LDAP, or basically what's, what's your advice on creating centralized phone books? Well, UCM is doing it automatically for you. If you have all the phones connected within the same PBX, in the same network, then all the extension, all the phone book that you create on, on each phone, they're going to be pushed automatically to the other phones. However, if you have a remote UCM, then you would like to share that phone book information to the other UCM. So then they can, they can communicate the phone book for, for each branch. And then that information is going to be pushed to all the phones. In order to do that, first of all, you need to create or enable your LDAP server. Um, I think the password is by default, which is admin admin. Then you go to the LDAP phone book, um, and then you can you oh, you cannot actually request or query a a phone book from a different from a remote LDAP server. So for the example that I'm giving right now, let's use the UCM phone book only. Then when you create your trunks, your zip trunk, you have a, an LDAP button right here. Well, I don't have it. I don't have it enable it, but let me enable LDAP on the settings. You go to advanced settings. Go to the bottom, and what is that right here? So you turn that on, then you enter the IP address. Then once you save it, well, let me see if I can save that. Then you have the, the LDAP sync button. 
So this UCM is going to sync up the LDAP every time that you press this button. <clears throat> we added in the latest framework that it's going to, that synchronization is happening automatically. Uh, there's a setting that you can configure that that's going to happen every, you know, once a day or once a week. So once the LDAP is synchronized, the phone books provided through the LDAP is going to be pushed automatically to the phones. Cool. We're, we're getting there. Um, is it possible to manipulate the calling number on inbound rules? Mm, yes, we, we can do that. There is a what we call strip and prepend option in your inbound route. You go to the bottom. My bad. That was for outbound route. For outbound, yes, we can manipulate that. For inbound, I, I know I've seen that I have received the same question before. Um, no, it's not supported at the moment. If you are interested in, in, in supporting that feature, please open a support ticket and you know give us more details why you need that. And probably we can include it in a future firmware. Awesome. Um, is it possible to set up a situation where, for example, uh, an employee would have to dial nine to be able to make an outbound call? Yeah, definitely. We support that option is uh, to make it similar to the legacy PV access. Yeah. So you can do that on the phone side. On the, the phones, they have a setting that says, I believe it's called something like outbound um, prepend prepend for app on calls, something like that. It's on the phone side, not on the PBX. So on, you enable that setting. You can, when, once you enable it, you enter the number that you want to use, typically zero or nine. So when the user presses the nine, he's gonna hear a second dial tone. And then after that period, anything that he enters in the keypad, that's gonna be sent to the UCM. So the UCM can connect it. If the UCM, uh, so just a general question about using the router mode on the UCM, um, if you could show, and maybe you did, and, and already where where that's kind of set up and how you take it advantage of that router mode feature. Sure. All the UCM 6200 series, by the way, they all support uh, router mode. And as I said before, uh, not too long ago, we added uh, support for IPv6. So in, the, in this menu, okay, oh, I'm sorry, the, the, this particular UCM is a 6108, which doesn't support router. But in a conventional UCM 6200, then you have a typical setting as a router, you can convert it. You can use it as a router uh, in a bridge mode uh, or static IP. So again, this is not the correct PBX, but yes, this is the menu in a UCM 6200 where you have the router uh, settings. I know that we covered this earlier, but um, somebody's asking if it's possible to configure Grandstream phones basically to have multiple extensions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. One extension can be registered uh, by multiple phones. You need to keep an eye that when you have, you go to the extension menu, and then at the bottom, you have an option that says concurrent registrations. Maximum is 10, so this extension, 1,000. If you increase that number to five, for example, then you can have up to five phones registering to that extension number.
And obviously, you can also do multiple extensions on one phone, which you just showed us. Oh, right. Yep. Yes. Um, the only it looks like the last thing here that I'll that we'll cover or that I'll ask you about is um, a couple of questions about the WebRTC support. Somebody pointed out, and I believe this is correct, that it actually was not supported in the original firmware that that it was supposed to be supported in. Um, so, mm -hmm. is it supported now? Yeah. It's supporting the latest firmware. I believe in the 14 or even the 13, we introduced WebRTC. He's right. We introduced WebRTC back in the firmware 10.x, I believe, uh, about a year ago. Uh, then we removed it, and then not too long, in the 13 and up, we added that uh, setting again, or that feature again. Um, so yeah, basically, you can have your browser click to dial, when you click an option in your browser, in your web page, sorry, you can configure your web server to connect to the UCM and dial an extension within the UCM, everything through WebRTC. So it's very um, NAT friendly, uh, and anyone from their browsers can make place a call to any extension behind the UCM. Awesome. All right. That, um, we're right up against it. 1129 local time. So we will wrap up today's webinar. Uh, before we do sign off, just want to kind of tell you about Grandstream Academy. Would you mind just sure. maneuvering over to the homepage? Uh, so some of you may have noticed this uh, through our social media posts or maybe some emails that you've got. We recently launched um, basically a more formal Cert training and certification program that is called Grandstream Academy. Um, going forward, all of our in-person trainings all across the world will be, you will be able to find out about those through this Grandstream Academy. Basically what we've done is we've taken the trainings we've already been doing and we've turned it into a formal program with formal certification levels um, and actual, I believe it's two year ranges on when you get certified, um, you can use this system to take the training certification exams at, um, excuse me, at the trainings you attend, um, as well as access a variety of other information. But as an end user or reseller, you'll mainly use this just to see and sign up for trainings. The login that you're seeing here is the staff login, um, I believe. Uh, so it might look a little bit different than what you uh, see. But basically, the two levels, um, this is going to, you'll begin to see this, and, and our trainings will be, in-person trainings will begin to be incorporated with this. We have two main levels. We're going to have the Grandstream Certified Professional. That's more of a, we'll, we'll call it a, a basic uh, sales marketing training. Um, I don't know if sales and marketing is the right word, but basically uh, the specialist level is uh, sort of, you'll get certified basically to know what the device does, all the features that it has and what those features do. Then you move up to the next level, which is Grandstream Certified Professional, professional um, which is what our full in-person trainings will allow you to achieve. Um, so basically, if you've been to any of those in-person trainings um, in the past, that will be allow you to become grant, a Grandstream Certified Professional. And then we have a more basic level below that, Grandstream Certified Professional, or excuse me, Grandstream Certified Specialist. It's new to us here, so we're getting used to it too. Um, but check that out if you're, you know, looking to get officially certified, to have an official certifi certificate claiming you're certified, to be able to have a certification number and track that information and attend trainings and update your, your training certification, head on over to Grand, or what is it, uh, academy.grandstream.com to sign up for an in-person train or an upcoming training. Um, yeah, and well, this is something new that we just debuted recently. Um, it really, frankly, doesn't change anything about the trainings that we're doing. It's just where you sign up for it, and now we give you the ability to actually have a specific certification level that you can track um, and update online. 
All right, so that's gonna wrap up for today's webinar. Do appreciate everybody spending some time with us here today. Uh, went through a lot over the last two hours. Thanks Ernesto for taking us through everything. Um, and thank all of you for taking some time out of your busy schedules to be with us here. Uh, know that as we approach the, the end of the year and the holiday season, it's a really busy time for everyone. So appreciate you guys taking some time out to be with us today. As I mentioned, uh, this webinar was recorded. It will be posted, uh, the full video and audio recording will be posted on our YouTube page, so check that out. I would check it tomorrow. Um, just head on over to YouTube, search Grandstream, or I believe the URL is uh, Grandstream, excuse me, youtube.com slash Grandstream Networks. All right, so again, thanks for being with us here today. Hope to see you at another Grandstream webinar very soon, and have a great day.